Today's an exciting day as we have the Alpha 7 for the Cosmic Rust desktop released and it's getting very close to beta. We're gonna get into that soon, but some of the big features that have been updated with this latest release of Alpha 7, I'm already here on the desktop environment. We're gonna be checking the latest and greatest out, but things that got reworked are workspaces, accessibility, tool tips, global shortcuts and scaling optimizations with massive bug fixes and improvements as we're inching closer and closer to the beta release. I'm super excited to show this off today. And there's a new ISO for the latest Cosmic release. First thing to start with is workspaces can now be moved around by clicking and dragging, reordering the workspaces on the current display. So how does that work? Well, I have a bunch of workspaces actually opened up right now, including some, for example, here I have files. I can move this over to a new workspace very easily by dragging and dropping. I can also move my Firefox window, for example, and everything's getting updated now in real time. We can also see things operating in real time. As you can tell, I'm recording with OBS Studio and you can see my recording going in real time. And we're actually seeing an update in the workspaces now as well. This is something that I ran into last time that wasn't quite working. You couldn't see the updates being made over here in the workspace windows and now you officially can, which is fantastic. What else they have? Well, they have a pinned tool which you can pin to the top, your favorite workspace. Also, you can now move these workspaces around, making it a little more accessible in the order that you want to see these. Now, the one thing I'll mention is you can't go below, for example, workspace four here because that workspace is currently not really being used. I don't know if I like that or not yet. I have to play with it some more, but we can see how to move these workspaces around. I think this is a great addition for organization purposes. If you ever get lost on a workspace, for example, you don't know where the files is located. Well, now what's awesome is you just click on files. Notice I have two different files and I don't know which workspace they're currently on. Well, I just click and it goes directly to that specific workspace. Fantastic work by the System76 team. Love the overhaul of the workspaces window, which was much needed. I spoke about this in the last video and I'm super happy that they're completely focused on making the user experience even better here. Another thing that we've seen is at the bottom now with the dock, we have tool tips. If you go across the bottom with the dock now, you'll see a tool tips, which is fantastic. It tells you here things like application, Firefox web browser, Cosmic files, Cosmic text editor. You now know what you're clicking before you click on it which is awesome. Of course, I wanna show off what I'm currently running this on. It is my Optiplex server, which has Pop! OS 24.04 LTS with kernel version 6.12. It's been up for about 16 minutes and I'm running 1,925 standard packages and 15 flat packs. Of course, I've installed the flat packs by myself, had to get a few to make things work correctly out of the box. Anyways, we're running the Cosmic desktop environment and this is all being ran on an i5-7500 with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Super. I have about 3.3 gigs out of that 32 gigs available being ran on this computer. We're gonna get in more into memory usage, but let's move on to some of the other updates. We also now have new accessibility features. Four new accessibility features were introduced, including the high contrast mode, which uses high contrast theme effects for various different elements to make it easier for visibility. We have color filters, add a filter to address common forms of color blindness. We also have color inversion, which changes theme colors using different calculation for the purpose of helping those, again, with color blindness. And mono sound aids with those with hearing loss by combining left and right sound channels to a single channel channel for both ears. Fantastic to see some of the accessibility features being updated. And this all can simply be reached by going into the settings, going to accessibility, and turning on and off the varying different accessibility options. Great to see again. We talked about the magnifier in the last video. You'll definitely want to check that out if you're interested in the zoom and magnification process, but it is a fantastic tool. Got to give it to them. They're really thinking Another cool deal here is they've actually optimized the scaling. There's better handling of the X Wayland fractional scaling for CRISPR app and a full screen gaming experience. And with that, the doc also received another update, which now I have previews for what I'm about to click on, which is something I personally enjoy and like, especially if you have multiple windows open. For example, I have the files 
open in two different places on two different workspaces, now we can see not only the tooltip, but a preview of what we're about to select. Also with the sound settings, we now have a balance option, which allows us to balance whether or not we want the left or right ear to hear a little more. For example, if I slide over to the right, that means the right ear is getting all the audio versus if I slide over to the left, the left ear gets all the audio and in the middle, both ears get that audio. Enhancements to the settings, of course, but what's fantastic is there have been massive bug fixes and improvements, including CPU usage reductions, major Bluetooth pulse audio and VPN fixes. File operations now behave properly, including deletes, renames, favorites, trash, gallery and view, and even some UI tweaks. Before we get on to the next awesome update in Cosmic Alpha 7, take a moment and subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another video. YouTube can get finicky. And also, on the way back up, smash that like button for me. Let's talk global shortcuts. Global shortcuts for applications allow you to use an application-specific shortcut, even if that application is not in focus. This is especially useful for features like push to talk and push to mute. This is off by default to protect privacy, but can set to recognize modifier keys, all keys, or all keys only while modifiers are being pressed. A toggle for recognizing mouse events across applications is included here as well. While this update adds compatibility for global shortcuts, we hope to support a more modern global shortcuts portal soon. And now getting into files, a seek ahead feature has been added, which is something that I think is absolutely fantastic. So now instead of just being reliant on typing everything out correctly, you can see that they're filling and pre-filling things out for you that you can select from instead of having to type everything out. I really like that feature. I talked about that in a previous video as well. I love the fact that they've added that in. It just makes using Cosmic Files even easier. So there's been some other fixes as well with Cosmic Files, including progress bar fixes, better trash behavior, path editing, and the single click to open file settings. Now, the one thing I'll mention is the Cosmic Media Player is just not up to par quite yet. Anything that I try to run in there, it just does not work. And that's the default application that's being selected in order to play my media files. So I've been having to change this over to something like VLC Media or the old videos player. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how that gets improved. I do like the fact that they've added stuff up top, like icons that show you what's running in the background which can give you sub menus where you can easily, through an app shortcut, do simple things, including increasing speed. If you're running, for example, VLC Media Player in the background, this taskbar allows you to play, stop, record, and even change up the speed if you're listening to something. Increase the volume, decrease the volume, so on and so forth. This is a great tool and feature for a lot of different applications. I'm sure they're gonna be taking use of this, but for example here, it'd be really nice if I knew that OBS Studio was currently recording. There's no way to tell whether or not OBS Studio is really recording, even though I do have it recording in the background. You can tell right here. I definitely would like to know things like if my camera's on, if the microphone is being recorded from, that type of stuff is always nice to have some kind of visual indication on whether or not that's happening in the background. Sometimes you leave things open and you're recording and it'd just be nice to know and understand that that's happening on the system. They also mention a better calendar with a way to show you today's date. So before you couldn't really see which date it was and now they have it circled in blue on whatever date it currently is. There hasn't been many options quite added yet to customize that calendar, doubt that there's going to be. Overall, it's fine. And there's also been a ton of bug fixes. And we're gonna go through some of those with what they call volume seven for alpha seven. But I wanna talk about beta. Beta seems to be coming soon as the System76 team is now super focused on bug busting. We could see a beta in the next couple revisions of alpha. I would hope we'd see something by the summer here where we'd get a beta with hopefully an end of year release of the full cosmic desktop environment. As I get more information about the release, I'm definitely going to let everyone know but right now it's still up in the air. They still have bugs and fixes that they need to make, but let's talk about some of the ones that they've made for Alpha 7. Shape Run Cache added to Cosmic Compositor for significant reduction in CPU usage. They also fixed a loop causing high CPU usage when Pulse Audio was not installed. Fixed a bug causing Bluetooth to consume CPU resources on Connect. Significantly reduced CPU usage when resizing apps. Fixed a bug causing high CPU 
usage when that Bluetooth applet was disabled, supported adding ex extension workspace v1 and image capture v1 Wayland protocols, added cosmic workspace v2 protocol, favorited files that can be deleted now prompt an error dialog, renamed files or directories will now update in the sidebar with the new file path, fixed the bug that caused the file to be deleted when moved to a directory of identically named file even when skip is selected, and many, many more bugs. You can tell that the team is hard at work trying to get the desktop improved. I can't go through all the bug fixes because we'd be talking all day, but I'm gonna leave a link in the description below so you can check all these out for yourself. I'm quite excited as things are moving forward with Cosmic as we see this Alpha 7. It's been a few months since we saw 6, so I'm very happy to see Dev is happening and they're highly focused on trying to pave a way for a more polished beta release. The update process is super easy. If you just start a terminal and you already have the alpha version, no need to reinstall with an ISO. Instead, just run sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade. This will update whatever Cosmic Alpha version you have to the latest and greatest Cosmic Alpha version if you wanna check it out for yourself. Make it super easy on yourself, just do it this way instead of reinstalling the whole operating system. All right, I promised I'd check out some of the usage here. With HTOP, it's not going to be fair as I'm running about 25 to 30 percent on the CPU with my four core processor, and I have 3.2 gigs out of 32 gigs. Now, what I want to say is we've dropped down around the 1.5, 1.6 gig mark with the desktop environment once it's freshly loaded. But right now, of course, I'm recording things, so things have jumped up because of that recording. I'll make an update about this in the comment section. Check it out so you know exactly how much RAM is being used by the desktop environment on a startup. Anyways, tasks currently running 161, 622 threads, 155 kernel threads, and I've been up for about 35 minutes with this system. Overall, I'm super excited to start using the Cosmic Rust desktop. I'm already using it pretty much day to day. As you can see, I have DaVinci Resolve installed on here and I've been tinkering around with the system, just trying to use things. The Bluetooth has gotten better, which has made me happy, although I've gotten around that with a receiver at this point, but I'm stoked to see if we'll get a beta very soon here. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Also, if you haven't already, go down and subscribe for more videos like this. Make sure to smash that like button. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.